Welcome to the Good Fight Radio Show, a program dedicated to bringing you vital and uncompromised truths that you won't hear in the mainstream media, discussing contemporary issues in light of the Bible and how these issues relate to family, culture, and the church. The heart of this show is to glorify Jesus Christ and expose the works of darkness as He is commanded in Ephesians 5.11. Now here's your host, Good Fight Ministries' own Chad Davidson. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, you are hearing a special presentation of part two of Playboy's Satanic Link. Now, Playboy's Satanic Link is actually the second part of a four-part series that we've been doing covering Satanism, pornography, and sex trafficking. And we're excited to present this to you. And if you want to see this video as well as the video that premiered last week, Satan's Sex Scheme. You can go to our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to it, and check those out in their video format. But you can also subscribe and make sure you are there on Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time when we premiere part three of this series on the video titled, How Porn is the New Norm. And also, you could be ready, if you're subscribed, to watch the next video that is coming out on this series the following Friday at the same time, titled, From Porn to Sex Trafficking. So without any further ado, get ready for Playboy's Satanic Link. And this video right now that you're watching is hopefully trying to help you find a way out of it. And with all that, I have to ask, Joe, how do we find a way out? Well, it's interesting. Uh... Judith, you know, she puts her finger on a lot of the problems. We, we flew to Arizona and interviewed her, and it was great. She was a delight to interview. I had her as a captive audience. She's a Jewish lady and real nice lady, but I had her as a captive audience, so I witnessed to her probably for about half an hour or so, telling her all about the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Messiah. And uh, we had a great time. Uh, I don't know if she, she only squirmed a little bit for about a half an hour there, uh, but she, I know she appreciated my passion. And, but he is, Jesus said he came to set the captives free in Luke chapter 4. In John chapter 8, Jesus said, uh, you know the truth, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So it's important that we know that uh, there is a way out. And uh, there's all kinds of people that can't find a way out because they're trying again to win these battles in their own strength. But Christ gives us power because he made us, he loves us. He doesn't just guide us, but where he guides us, he provides for us. So he provides us strength and power. I can say by the grace of God through his power that I don't have to worry about going into porn and and picking up magazines or or watching videos. It's not in my heart because he's given me a new heart. Now that doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but it does mean this, that the scriptures tell me, and it's very, very clear, that I can hide his word in my heart so I won't sin against him, that I can keep my eyes fixed on him, and, and that I can run the race that's marked out before me as I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, and that I can take my thoughts captive, and that I can walk in the truth, and that I can walk in the Spirit, not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So I'm not, I'm not this kind of person where it's like, oh yeah, I'm perfect, no, far from it. But the Bible says, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. So I can pay attention and say, hey, I need to keep my eyes on Jesus, and I need to rely on his power to walk in holiness and righteousness. And by the grace of God, I've been a pastor for many, many years now, uh, 35 or so years. I'd have to do the math, you know. But my wife's my secretary, you know. She has a secretary, but I never spend time alone with her secretary. They both work for me, but I always go through my wife. And I don't counsel women alone. So you just safeguard yourself. And you're busy doing the work of God. And when you're busy serving Jesus, guess what? You don't have enough time to fall into sexual sin. And I think that's a huge key. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So our strength comes through Jesus Christ. Cleansing comes through Him. And I'm not saying, I mean, every single one of us, you know, uh, has had impure thoughts, myself included. Martin Luther had said, you can't keep birds from flying around your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. So we're all going to face temptations. I love that. Yeah, you're going to face temptations, but you don't have to let the birds build a nest in your hair. Don't let Satan build a nest in your life. Don't let him have a place in your heart. And jettison anything that's alluring or you succumb to that allows you to fall into these things. And recognize that Jesus will set you free. And I came to Jesus Christ years and years ago. And before I was a Christian, 
uh, that was before the uh, you know the internet was big and everything. Oh, the internet wasn't even around, but there were <laughs> magazines and stuff. And I, by the grace of God, I didn't have the porn problem. I came to Christ when I was just turning eighteen. But prior to eighteen, oh yeah, guess what? If somebody would plop a magazine in in my house or whatever, and you no, know, I'd seen some pictures on the railroad tracks and seen some things here and there. Yeah, I was like any other boy. I would have given into that and looked at it. And I had when I was a, a boy at a few times. But when I came to Christ, it wasn't like, do I want to live that lifestyle? It was like, no, that, you have to make that a non-negotiable. So pornography for me became a non-negotiable. It would be like, should I rob that bank? No, robbing a bank is a non-negotiable for me. I'm a Christian. That's how we ought to look at porn as Christians. It should be an absolute non-negotiable. Why would I go there? That's not who I am. My identity is in Christ. So it's important to come to him for cleansing and forgiveness. But it's also important to pray without ceasing Jesus said, pray that you don't enter into temptation to rely on his strength and the empowerment and the enablement of his Holy Spirit so we can give us victory over these temptations. Yeah, we need to make sure we're guarding our heart. You know, the Bible is very, Absolutely. very clear on that subject. And interesting enough, we're talking about Judith Reisman. And you, when you interviewed her, one of the things she mentioned that was one of her biggest findings was the fact that they were normalizing sex with children in the most popular pornographic magazines, how they were putting kids in sexual positions with adults in these pornographic yeah. pictures and cartoons in their magazines. Yeah, they would often penthouse, playboy, hustler, uh, depending on which, what she does. And she gave us a lot of the cartoons. A lot of times it's in the cartoon section where they would put a girl in pigtails or they put her in uh, you know, religious school outfit or they put her with a teddy bear you know, and maybe she looks 18 or so, but then they try to make her look younger with those props. And what they're constantly doing is creating this cognitive dissonance for, and Judith Reisman had went through all these magazines and she found them over and over and over again. In fact, it's interesting. Reisman in her book, Sexual Sabotage, notes that, quote, quote, cartoons urging sex with children appeared in Playboy in a systematic manner from 1954 to 1984. It was systematic, she states. She states that Playboy, with 1,196 cartoons of children, most of them sexualized, and with 1,849 visuals of children under 18, also usually sexualized by implication or association with the centerfold photo and other techniques. In other words, uh, it's important to understand, just like Crowley's end goal and Kinsey's end goal was the children, Playboy's end goal, at least with a lot of their publications was going after the children. We have to realize this is, you can't defend pornog the pornographic industry. They're after, and even if they weren't after our children, it's wicked, it's debased, it's abominable, it's perverse. But add to the fact that they're going after our children, trying to legitimize sexualizing children. And now we wonder why there's all this sex trafficking with little kids, why there's all this child porn around. Why, of course it is. The world's been conditioned for this by Satanists. Now it's interesting too, because uh, there was a, uh, cartoon uh, called Chester the Molester, and it was a part of Hustler magazine. And Chester the Molester was a cartoon with a character, and he was Chester the Molester. And they made, they trivialized the idea and glorified this idea that this guy was a child molester. And the author of Chester the Molester actually lived, lived right here in Simi Valley. And yeah, he did. And he lived not far from where I lived. And I found out about it after the fact, and he was taken to court. Uh, because he had used his art, Chester and Lester art, to break down uh, and, and young, you know, I think. Who were they? Yeah, as, I think even his own daughter. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm trying to remember back. But he used it as, hey, look what, to normalize sexual alley or sexual experiences between a child and an adult. And then he proceeded to molest. Now, it's interesting. Uh, he was convicted at first. But then it was overturned because he, they, they deemed that you weren't, weren't allowed to use his art to convict him over, you know, this alleged crime. So, and he was, he was the uh, writer for Hustler. So it's very, very perverse. Yeah, and like you said, it's a conditioning yeah. thing that we're talking about. So when we see in society the Jeffrey Epsteins of the world, when we see the Kenneth Angers and the James Francos and the Asia Argentos, you see them over and over, with, it's luring. It's a process, and they're all learning it from the same source. Yeah. Like you said, it's a connection. It's Kinsey. It's Crowley. It's anger. 
it's Hefner, yeah. it's now we're talking about Hustler. Over and over again, you have this, this wickedness and all of it is from the same source. And that's one of the things that I think should be brought out as well is the fact there's an objective moral lawgiver. That's why we all know that this is wrong. That's why we all know that you, su- deep down, we know it, yeah. you suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And that's how you're able to do this because you sear your conscience as with a hot iron. And that is why a lot of people get addicted to fetish porn. And that's why a lot of people go into this because they continue to need more and more and be dirtier and dirtier because it's just not getting their thrills anymore. So what Paul talks about in Ephesians, he talks about how they, uh, one translation talks about how they needed more and more. They're, they're callous, you know. Uh, those who are deceived by the deceitfulness of lust, they become callous and they want more and more. They're never satisfied. No, it, it never, ever satisfied. Porn will never satisfy. And that is why we are trying to show you as best as possible the satanic link behind this. The fact that it didn't just start randomly. And how on earth did it go from you have to sneak under your dad's bed that he shouldn't have to get a pornographic magazine to now any child could have porn on their phone in 0.4 seconds. And you would have or be none the wiser. And you can hide the fact that you're on your phone looking at pornography while sitting at your family with di- at dinner. And these are things that we want to talk about because this normalization that's happened, just as you did with They Sold Their Souls to Rock and Roll, that you started from Robert Johnson and going forward, this is the same exact right. thing that is taking place when it comes to pornographic films, when it comes to, as we will get to, sex trafficking as well, this direct link from Satan through it all. And if you are one that is behind this, watching these things, being aroused by these things, by the way, just know you're being duped by Satan. And speaking of that, if you want to talk a little bit about Hustler, I know that you did an interview where you mentioned, you talked specifically to the founder of the Hustler Empire's daughter. daughter, yeah. I called uh, Tanya Flint, uh, Tanya Flint Vega, and we were going to interview her. And I had a great talk with her, uh, although she was very emotional. There was a lot of tears, hard crying as she shared with me the pain that she has had with her father, Larry Flint, the founder of the Flint uh, Empire and Hustler, a uh, movie made about him, The People vs. Larry Flint by Oliver Stone. Although Oliver Stone just seems to skip some very important things that happened in Larry Flint's life and makes it look like he's a hero of free speech. That's how Satan works, right? So uh, in her book, she talks about, she goes through the incestuous relationship that her dad foisted upon her. He molested her. Uh, and uh, I think she and her, her sister were seven, eight years old uh, when he, because he abandoned them, uh, apparently, and then he invited them over. Uh, and then when they were over, he dressed them like strippers, put them in the bar area, strippers and so forth. And uh, uh, according to her, he was an incredibly uh, perverse man. Now, it's interesting because that is not how he's portrayed in, uh, I mean, she even talks about in that book where he had sex with a chicken, you know, and where it bled and ended up killing and the chicken. Which book is this? Uh, in her book, she wrote a book called Hustled, you know, My Journey uh, from Fear to Faith. And uh, when he was younger, you know, he had, and he killed the chicken, you know. He was into bestiality, into all kinds of things, a perverse youngster, and then became a perverse husband, and uh, according to her, molested her, and she, uh, she, wept through my radio, my phone interview with her, and we agreed, you know, because at that time, she claimed that she'd come to Christ, embrace Jesus as her Lord and Savior, which I was happy to hear when she was sharing that. And she, of course, would love to have seen her dad come to faith, so she was hoping that she could uh, be reconciled with him and forgive him and share Christ with him. So uh, we agreed that if that was her objective at that time, uh, doing an expose uh, on him, in our video, the Kinsey Syndrome would probably not be uh, appropriate at that time. And she did, as I mentioned, wrote a book. She wrote a book called, uh, yeah, Hustled, My Journey from Fear to Faith. And that's what we want people to understand. We want people to understand that if you've been a victim and you've been victimized by those who have been, you know, uh, programmed and, and brainwashed by pornography and have been insensitive uh, and callous and wicked and, and hurt you sexually, that you can, you can, 
cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and ask him for healing, and he'll bring healing to you. If you have perpetuated sin against somebody else, you're in huge trouble with God, and you need to repent uh, before it's too late, before you take your last breath here, and get right, because he paid for the sins that you committed on the cross, and you, your journey could be from porn to faith in Christ, you know, or from sadomasochism to faith in Christ, from being a sexual offender to faith in Christ. Whatever you are in bondage to, we encourage you right now to embrace Jesus Christ and find the freedom that's only found in Him because He did come indeed to set the captives free. Yeah, guys, that is really the whole goal behind this entire series. And as we continue seeing S Satan's fingerprint clearly throughout the sexual revolution, throughout pornography being normalized, we're going to continue in our next video just to see how porn became the new norm. You've been listening to the Good Fight Radio Show brought to you by Good Fight Ministries. If you're blessed by this show and would like to partner with us, won't you consider visiting our support page at goodfight.org? Or you can write to us at P.O. Box 2202, Simi Valley, California, 93062, or call us toll-free at 1-866-JC-TRUTH. That's 1-866-528-7884. We hope you'll tune in next time on the Good Fight Radio Show.